What's up and welcome to Skill Tree, where we learn how to do just about everything. So, you may notice we're in a different setting. We're in my office area where I do the live streams usually. And this is because I'm gonna be traveling most this week and I'm on a really like tighter than usual time schedule. So I don't think I'm gonna be able to finish the skill I'm working on this week. So instead, I figured we'd have a, we'd have a little bit of fun. A lot of times what the other side of this channel is, is me looking for things to do or just kind of looking up from some cool skills or ideas. And I do that by jumping onto YouTube or Pinterest or whatever, and just kind of watching videos and, and assessing what I see. Sometimes I come up with some great ideas. Sometimes it's all just kind of crap. And honestly, some of the some of the crap ones are the most fun to watch because people come up with some weird stuff on the internet. So I figured it would be fun to just kind of hang out today and do that. Just watch some like, I don't know, maybe some crappy tutorials, some good ones. Um, um, and just critique and talk about them as I go. First, I must pour a drink. Hold on. It's very important for the process, you know. Mm. My body is ready. All right, so here's one that one of you subscribers had actually shared with me. It's from Hans Altair, and it's turning a paper bag into a real bag. Let's have a look. All right, he's got like a nice Dior paper bag. So he's dissecting the bag. What is he? Is he gonna make it into like a, he's gonna make it into like a handbag. All right, he's using templates. He's cutting the bag to leather templates and he's adding it to like a, like a felt of some sort or. <gasps> Is he gonna like, oh my God, he's gluing the paper onto the leather. <gasps> oh my God, that is a great idea. Oh my God, this person is so good. Look how fine that bevel tool is. That is really nice work. Okay, he's got this little, little end of leather here, making a nice little detail, and he's adding some contact adhesive to the edges of it. Oh, he's making a handle. Oh, that's pretty slick. What's well, gonna give it kind of more body though? Because I feel like it's just a folded piece of leather right now. Oh, he's adding like a like a plastic core to give it more body. All right, that makes a lot of sense. Ooh, I like this video. This guy is great. Gluing the handles down into place and then he added uh, the holes for the stitching and he's gluing it to, gluing it to that outside of the bag. Oh my God, this bag is gonna be so dope. What's he doing with that plastic though? All right, he's using the, the templates he used before to get it to the same shape. Adding a little bit of glue to the, oh, he's gonna coat the whole thing in a plastic to protect the paper. Oh my God. <laughs> That's a good idea. All right. I am going to use this idea. Let's see what the finished product comes out to. Yeah. Okay. Like, look at that. That That's taking some paper. You're adhering it onto a nice quality leather. You're cutting the pattern out just as you normally would. You put the whole thing together and he's coating it in like a nice plastic. And then you can see kind of along the rim here and along the stitching edge in the sides, he's just added another like wrapped around piece of leather to protect those edges. Oh man, that is dope. That is a great technique. What a cool idea that is. I'm 100%. Again, this is how I like do the, the projects I do. I will come up with cool ideas and I'll watch something like this that is so inspirational. And I think of so many things you can do if you're into like LARP or cosplay or whatever, have a design. Maybe, you know, um, if you're doing uh, Resident Evil, you have like the Umbrella Corporation or something, but you want to make a really high quality. You can just print something up and you can add it to either, you know, foam or like real leather if you wanted to make something that was really quality and would last a long time. That's a cool idea. I dig that one. All right, here's another one that has shown up for me a, f a few times. Um, I've watched this living anachronism a, a bunch of times when I was looking for very specifically like LARP kind of flavored things. He's really good. He covers some great stuff and I think you should follow me. He only has 13K subs and I think he deserves more to be honest with you. So this one in under four minutes, he says he's gonna teach me how to make a Viking hood. So Greetings, adventurers. Today we are making a Viking hood. All right, Size trial and error is gonna be, uh, all, all so I do is trial and error. You know what? It's a four minute video. He says I'm gonna be able to do it with a little bit of trial and error. Give me a second. All right, I have just a bunch of fabric scraps. We're gonna try this thing out in real time. And so I don't have to sew, I brought a bunch of like little pins too so I could put it all together that way, just to test it out. All right, so he explains 
the measurements very well. Yeah, but what we're gonna do, since I know I have pieces that are kind of long, I'm, I'm gonna just wing it. No measurements happening here. I'm gonna guesstimate how we do. I think we've got. I think we've got this. Cut this a little more square. That's gonna be this. This is gonna be my hood. This is right here, kind of hood shaped. I think I actually might have cut part of this for a hood at one point that looks hood shaped to me. So we're gonna use that. It's perfect. So now I have I have two squares in that hood piece right there. All right, two squares. Hood piece. All right, so pinning. All right. Which faces the okay. Body or the top All right. Of the I did it. I have my long. Look at this. That's my my long T shape. He's talking about right here. I've got my long T shape in order to, to get this thing going. Bottom of the hood. Are All right. Going to be the sides that hang straight down here. All <laughs> there are no straight <laughs> cuts here, sir. Chain, All right, we're forming a little, much like the hood. little triangles. Let's we'll sew them so together. Now, but All right, so I've closed up my hood here. So now I've got to, I imagine, just close up. I've got that one large so opening one and two. All right, so now we're just, now we're just sewing the back of this hood up and then turning it inside out. So let's see. I've got a lot of needles sticking out of here. It's definitely going to poke into my head. All right, let's turn her inside out. You know what? I think, I mean, it's not a straight cut piece at all, but let's put it on. Let's see. Hold on. Hold on. Ah, there are so many sharp points. Ugh. Damn needles. This is dangerous. You know what? I think this worked. Uh, this, this is all funky because it's just not cut evenly because it was a scrap piece, but uh, check it out. If this was like a sewed thing, who like I actually cared enough to to take measurements and didn't just follow along with a four minute video and get it done within roughly I don't know five or six minutes, this thing would fit just fine. This is a hood with this cool little little diamond feature in the front. That's not bad. All right, you know what? I dig that. That's pretty good. Let me take out all the. I've got so many needles sticking in me right now. And just so y'all know, this is this is 100% 100% how I do things when I'm coming up with like episode stuff. Just trying it out as we go and seeing if it seems feasible. That is easy. That is a really easy project to do. Like I said, definitely check him out. Living Anachronism is his name. He only has 13k subscribers. He really should have more. Really good at what he does. Um, information's always super clear. I've watched him a few times. I watched him this last time I was actually making this foam sword here, Sting. Though he didn't have a tutorial on how to make a foam sword, he had a lot of tutorials on like what they should feel like and what they should be made out of and all that kind of jazz. But yeah, I'll leave his link in the description below. Ooh, while I'm on that, actually, let me do one more. Hold on, let me show you this one. Uh, I really wanted to push out, uh, what is her name? Cartsy, I think is how you pronounce it. She's really interesting. So she has this video here that I ran into this morning that was teaching how to make some samurai armor. Uh, one of the things that's cool about her is she starts off by like straight up a deep dive into the history of like the different types of armor, ages in which it was used, what each individual part is, before she gets into actually making it for cosplay. And I believe she makes it out of foam and warbla, but she does a great job. So let me let me fast forward to the end here. Like, look at how good that came out. This she does a great job. And again, she doesn't just kind of show you how to make it, but she also teaches you about the armor as you go. So definitely check her out as well. So yes, Living Anachronism and Cartsy. Both of them are really great. And also, if either of you see this and me reviewing your thing here, um, definitely like reach out. I'd totally do a collab with you if you're down with it. Anyways, that's it for me for today. I've got, again, some traveling to do. So I'm hoping to jump on the live stream this Tuesday with Middle Miss Red. If I do, it will be straight from a hotel room. So I'll see you there. Otherwise, though, if you like this kind of format and us just kind of hanging out and watching videos and critiquing them together, I guess, definitely let me know down in the, uh, the comments below and also let me know if you have any videos you'd kind of like me to watch and, and, and pick apart this way. Of course, don't forget to like and subscribe and all that good stuff. And if there's anything else you'd like me to cover on the show, why don't you leave it down in the comment section and I'll add it to the list here. In the meantime, though, 
Keep leveling up, you. Hey, you stay to the end screen. That's amazing. So YouTube thinks that you'd like these videos down here as well. And I think that the YouTube overlords know by now exactly what you're thinking at any point in time. So I'd, I'd click one of those. You don't want to make them, you don't want to make them angry. Do not make the overlords angry.